Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Ongakadu, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for the week of November 6, 2020. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Luna. Hey, everyone. Oginki. And Gray. What's happening, dudes? Whoa. We're alive. Woohoo! It's Friday. Friday. What have we been listening to? Let's start with you, Gray. Uh, yeah, uh, I have been listening to Dice, a lot of Dice, a lot of Arashi, and a lot of this week's MC. I really found Sway's new single and really enjoyed that, so definitely give that a listen to. And is there anything else I've been listening to? I was going to uh, say, man, you've been just hitting it with the boy groups, but then your your MC, well, I mean, that's... That's a, yeah, my, a whole, my, whole, whole other talk entirely. <laughs> yeah, my MC's, uh, it's not boy group related, so that, that'll be fun when we get to it. But yeah, oh, I keep finding boy groups too. Like there's like two or three boy groups. I found one today. I'm pretty like, sure if if you only listen to that specific genre, Apple Music <laughs> is mostly like going to be like, hey, I know you listen to only this. Well, how about another one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I heard I heard Shall We Kiss by Kira Kira Sin Batsutai earlier today and I was like, My god, this is actually a really good song, so uh that, and I had never heard of this group, so that sounds absolutely dreadful. It for you it probably would be. <laughs> it sounds absolutely dreadful in my personal opinion. <laughs> it, it's good. It's it was really good. Uh it it's very generic boys group, but in the in all the right ways, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. But besides that, what have you been listening to, Luna? A lot of random stuff. So I'll start out. I thought you were gonna say boy groups. <laughs> uh, well, actually, Ada she is. So technically, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, Ada she is. Yeah. So I've been listening to a ton of Ada she. I absolutely love them. So that's been in my ears, and Kotakumi due to. If you, ch- if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see why. She has some new release coming up. And what else? Michi, who I go back to every now and then because I absolutely love her. And I have her song Saturday Night stuck in my head. Jasmine, Kira, Edu. Edu just dropped her new EP. So, you know, that's been in my ears. Our MC, of course, for this week. Also went back to Femme, who will talk about later and i know i listened to more than that cl from 21 she dropped some really nice hits boa and sholin and what and blackpink so yeah it's been a lot of random random ride right over here so gotta get all the good stuff in what about you ken what have you been listening to um i actually been listening to a lot of stuff actually first off i've been listening to ditzy sunfist because they're Episode 2 EP, a couple of more songs have been updated, so I've been listening to that. Been listening to Ivy Kala with their new white EP. Been listening to <laughs> Toyama Mire, which is really funny. With Sayonara, I've been actually really, really liking that song. And then I went on a lovely 90s and 80s kick with Blue Swing with her track Sunset, which is actually really, really freaking good if you guys really want some good old... 80 city pop and then i've been listening to momoko kinochi with her mystic composer song and that's actually really been good too and besides that um, i mean we got mc and then i got he die die i've been listening to a lot of his other stuff because i was in the mood for summer stuff and he's mostly known for summer stuff i mean slow and easy is his best song by far and Koku ni mo arumono, which is the new song that came out this past week, was really, really good. But with that, let's continue on to the news here. And first off is the lovely mannequin duo Femme released the teaser trailer for their new 2.0 version with their collaboration with Dukes of Harajuku called Level Up slash Summer Dreams. And it's actually... We, we talked about them last week, and we'll probably talk about them again next week just for other sakes. And they've been kind of 
evolving themselves from their normal stuff. So make sure you guys give that a listen. They have their te- we have their teaser movie on our site, including the digital download link for Level Up slash Summer Dream on our site as well. All right. So next up is. Japanese rapper, singer, songwriter, DJ, and producer Yayui Diamond has released her latest digital single, Makena, on October 2nd. So yes, it's been out for a little while. However, the music video recently just dropped and it is fantastic. So Makena comes a couple months after, actually a good amount of months, after her three EP girls that came out in March. And Makena is a song about, it pretty much is something to get you up and going and she, Yayui Diamond wrote this to help get everyone's spirits up with everything going on. It is a song to get you out of depression, make you want to dance. And it really does that. I freaking love it. And this has been in my ears. So go check it out on our site. You can watch the music video. You can check out the cover. And also it is available on all streaming platforms. I highly recommend it. All right, moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about Music Duo 1020, spelled X-I-I-X, as they've dropped a brand new music video for their song Halloween Night on their official YouTube channel. 1020 is composed of Kosuke Saito, who is the lead vocalist and guitarist from Unison Square Garden, and Yu Suto, who is a member of Ardbeck and Yuen Design. So... They just dropped their first album earlier this year, so if you're interested in checking out a new group, this is definitely something worth checking out. That music video is pretty psychedelic, and it was a it's a lot of fun to watch. So definitely check that out. I think I can continue and on up to celebrate the release of their latest album, Five Member Girl Adu Group. Kami Yado released the music video for their track, Ashita Mata Kimi Ni Adu, that is used to be the ending theme song for November's edition of the variety show, Buzz Rhythm 02. A part of the group's latest album, The Life of Idol, that was released back on October 21st, it goes on the important theme of meeting the fans and thoughts of the fans, and it's meant to be a highly inspirational beat, making this a must-listen for fans. came out with four different editions, as previously reported, and you can check out all the information about that on our site, including the music video in question and on our site as well. All right, so next up is Edu has released her latest mini-album and latest digital single, for her song Cut the Pole. So, and her newest mini album is called Love Like Hate. It is a nine track album, which you can read about all on our site and check out the pre order links. But it was released on November 4th. And Cut a Pole, which is one of the lead songs on here, is one of our first ballads. And it is about the fate of two people that meet. You can check out that music video on the site. And I highly recommend her new her album that just came out. It is fantastic. You can read more about it on there and check out the cover. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about rock band Telephones as they continue promoting their latest album, New, with a brand new music video titled Here We Go. It is a detective thriller that is a homage to the Showa detective type dramas and was... Directed by Mani Kato, new is being released in two editions, and you can find out all the details on our site along with a complete track listing and the music video for Here We Go. To build up hype for the upcoming release, the five-member girl idol group Jewel Seal released a music video for their track Boku Wa on their official YouTube channel. This will be the last single for member Emi Ando as she will be graduating on the on the from the group at the end of the year uh, December 27th and is a more graduation type of song and is talking about the future and how we'll never forget each other make sure you listen to all three editions that we have on our site including the music video in question on our site as well alright so next up is Udu Breaks the Pendulum in her latest music video and not only that Pop singer-songwriter Udo has also released her latest single entitled Break, Furiko. And this came out on October 28th and the day before she released the new, the music video for Furiko. 
those of you who don't know, Furuko is being used for the film Sumi no Koe, and Break is being used as the theme song for the anime Yashihime. You can check out the full track listing on here, music video for Furiko, and cover art as well. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about Fantastics from Exile Tribe. They have dropped their music video for their upcoming single, High Fever, and this, first off, the song is fantastic, highly recommend it. But it was done in visually, the music video was done visually in 80s style. And the song itself has a 80s flair to it. So I really, really dug it. It's being used for their drama called uh, Mannequin Night Fever, which also stars every member of the Fantastics. So you can check out the music video in the article. It has some pretty intricate dance moves. And they promoted this as being the most difficult choreo choreography that they've ever performed so definitely something worth checking out high fever is being released in two editions you can check out more details in the article on the site along with a full track listing and then continuing on up to industry legend gulch of asian kung fu generation fame released the music video for his latest track the age across all digital music streaming platforms the vocalist takes what what the fans know about him and turn it out of his head as this track is a more gospel slash R&B style track and he assembled an all-star crew as support members for this track such as Ryosuke Shimomura, Mabanua, Michiko Nakanishi, and Yosuke Inoue from Cook Chef's Me, Overlay, Yusei's Classes, and Turntable Films respectively. Rapper Basi handles the vocal intonations along with Diara Bongs and Keishi Tanaka of Ropes fame. And Minami Konishi also handles the backup vocals. It was very interesting to kind of do this because it was filmed in a church as well. So it's kind of just tapping on something that you wouldn't have guessed from the, the artist. So it's, it's nice. It's very nice. I got to listen to it. It's a very interesting track. Be sure to check out the music video of The Age on our site, including the digital streaming link on our site as well. And then to continue on up to celebrate the release of their latest 2020 Jazz Funk Greats album, the vocalist Udid released a music video for his track Eraserhead on his YouTube channel. This will be the latest release done by the up-and-coming quote-unquote radio wave artist who started his solo activities in November 19th. The album was produced as the soundtrack of the messed up year of 2020 and is greatly influenced by Ueda's beloved band, the British band Throbbing Gristles. You can check out all the information about this on our site, including the music video for Eraserhead on our site as well. Just kind of give a heads up here. It is really interesting to kind of do this because, yeah, he kind of goes into depth how 2020 wasn't a good year for him. <laughs> then continuing on up, it is the lovely five-member pop idol group Wasuda, or The World Standard, released a music video for their track Seidaku Awase Itadaki Nya on their official YouTube channel. Used as the lead track for their upcoming mini-album What Is Standard, the more anime rock style track was written by Union Square Garden's Tabuchi Tomoya and talks about chasing the desires without holding back. You can check out all the information about this on our site, including the pre-order links for What is Standard, which comes in two editions, on our site as well. And then continuing on up to a little festive styles of the year as if you're ready to celebrate Christmas with a heartwarming collection titled Happy Kids Xmas Japanese Christmas Songs. You can hear all the lovely fan favorites such as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Winter Wonderland in both Japanese fashions. According And of course, it'll in, in, include traditional Japanese nursery songs such as Usagi no Hara no Christmas and, and the such. It'll come with a single, uh, a CD-only standard edition, and it'll be made available across all digital music streaming platforms on November 4th, so this past week. So you can check out all the information on our site, including the Japanese version for Akahana no Tona Tonakai on our site as well. All right, so next up is... Vocalist, songwriter, and industry veteran Kodokumi has announced two special mini-albums to commemorate her 20th anniversary in the industry. 
This will be her first time releasing a mini album in all her 20 years. And they will be titled Angel, My Name Is and Monster, My Name Is. They will be coming out on December 2nd. So both of these are following the release of her fan club exclusive, My Name Is. As you can tell, that is the theme of her 20th anniversary. And both of these, so pretty much they represent, Angel represents light, while Monster represents darkness. And you can tell that by the cover artwork we have on our site as well. So this will come in several editions. It really depends on where you order from. So we have CD Japan links and Amazon exclusive links on here as each edition comes with something different. The Amazon exclusive come up postcard. CD Japan has not released their bonus details. In general, there will be, you can get them individually as CDs or you can do the two CD plus DVD combo pack. You can check out the full track listings for each mini album. The cover art and... Uh, Kodokumi's latest music video, XXKK, on our site. And continuing on up to popular alt idol group Bish, B I S H, released the music video for their track Story of Duty on their official YouTube channel. Released back on October 28th, this track was a collaboration with the popular FPS game Call of Duty Mobile and was written by Aina the End. What's very interesting about this as the music video does represent the theme of Call of Duty as you are taken into the lovely battleship island that is the World Heritage Site located on Nagasaki, Japan. So it's very interesting how they kind of tie in dropping down and doing all the battle war scene kind of things. But you can check out all the information about this on our site, including the music video for Sturdy of Duty on our site as well. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about voice actor and singer Gokuto Kajiwari as he has released the music video for his debut single titled A Walk. The new single is set to come out on November 25th and uh, Kajiwari is best known for his role as Asta in Black Clover and Shinra in Fire Force. So he's pretty new to the anime industry. He's pretty young uh, because I, if I remember correctly, I think Asta was his very first role. So, um, wait, how long was Black Clover? Black Clover, it came out two years ago, two three years ago. No, okay. Like it's like One Piece. There's a new episode every week, no matter yep. what. Yep. So, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're up to 150 episodes now. Oh, okay. So about three years then. But a walk is a high energy rock song. It it's pretty good. I really liked it. I I wasn't. A huge fan of his Asta, but I really, really liked it. So maybe I can go back and watch more Black Clover past the th- first three episodes. But this was a really good song. At the time of posting, there was uh, pre-orders weren't up on CD Japan. But if you're a fan of Koji Wari, uh, Koji Kajiwara, sorry, uh, this is something definitely worth checking out because he he has some really great pipes, and you get to hear him in a walk. And continuing on up to four member rock band Polka Dot Singer announced that they will be releasing a brand new album titled Nanny Moan on December 16th. Announced during their latest live Polka Dot Singer at Polka Fest 48 hashtag Koso Bakhtan online that happened earlier in October. This will be the latest album done by the band since Ocho 10 last year and will be their third album overall. A drop with 13 tracks total with a bonus 14 track for the physical release. And it will come in two editions. You can check out more information about that on our site, including the music video for free on our site as well. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about singer and songwriter Koji Tamaki, as he has announced he's going to be dropping a brand new album titled Chocolate Cosmos, which is set to be released on December 25th. Uh, This will be Tamaki's first album in almost six years. And contains self-covers of songs he has written for other artists. Uh, Tamaki has joined the music industry all the way back in 1982 as a frontman for the band Onzen Chitai. Chocolate Cosmos is being released in two editions, so you can definitely check out the more details on the site along with uh, the pre-order links for each edition. Then continuing on up to popular vocalists and voice actress 
Inori Minase announced that she'll be releasing a brand new single titled Starlight Museum on December 2nd. This will be the latest release done by Minase since Kokoro Somari back in February and will be her ninth single overall. Fans of the vocalist knows that December 2nd holds a very special place in their heart, the date of her 25th birthday, and will also mark the fifth year in the music industry. And she truly hopes to make it a memorable one. It'll come with only a CD-only standard edition and will release with three tracks. You can check out all the information about that on our site, including the preview for Starlight Museum on our site as well. Then lastly, for regular release news, it is the lovely three-member rock band Lucky Tapes revealed the music video for the track Laundry on their YouTube channel. Released across all digital music streaming platforms back last month, this will be the latest release done by the group since uh, before their upcoming album Blend in November or later on in the month. Vocalist Kai Takahashi directed and edited the music video himself and it was the first time that he has done so. And he does it with a little personal flair. So you can check out all the information about this on our site, including the digital music streaming link on our site as well. And lastly, we have one sad piece of news, I guess. I'm not too sure if you'll call it sad. I mean, it is a departure of somewhat. And that is the vocalist of Exile, Atsushi, announced that he will be graduating from the group on November 2nd and will be fo fully focusing on only on solo projects from here on out. Atsushi, who made his debut as the vocalist for Exile back in September 2001 with the single Your Eyes Only with Exile and sung about 200 songs and produced over 11 original albums and performed across 15 live tours. With the ongoing pandemic, Atsushi kind of thought about the future and became more motivated to challenge himself with a new dream as a solo artist. He commented saying, I'll be taking this opportunity and deciding to leave Exile in his upcoming book Sign, which was also published on November 12th, and written all the feelings that kind of led up to this moment. So it's a must get for fans. And it's unfortunate because it happened right before 20th anniversary of Exile's debut next year so it's kind of sad you can check out more information about that on our site and we wish him the best yes we wish him the best in his future endeavors and i'm sure we will be following his solo career very closely yeah his solo work when he was with exile was fantastic so i'm certain his solo career is gonna be really well and and we best of luck but yeah with that let's continue on to this week's music corner and Great, you have the lovely honor to introduce us to your group, so go right ahead. I am uber happy to do it. So this week we're actually going to be talking about an artist. His name is Kiro Akiyama, and uh, he is currently signed with Epic Records Japan. Uh, he writes, composes, and arranges all of his own songs his own works in his songs while also producing videos and illustration. He became interested in music when he was a junior in high school, thanks to the anime Kaon, where he was inspired to pick up and start playing bass. Uh, he would later go on to produce his first song while he was a freshman in high school. Uh, Yakiyama started his music career in 2018 and in June, the following year, he released his first single, Yasagure Kaido, which played number two on the Spotify viral charts. Also in the same summer, Akiyama made an appearance at Summer Sonic 2018, which is an annual two to three day rock festival held at the same time in Osaka and Chiba. In January 2019, Akiyama released his first mini album, titled Hello My Shoes, and in March of 2020, he released his first full-length album titled Dropout, which also served as his major debut. And Kiro Yakiyama, he's a powerhouse in so many ways. The, the fact that he's able to work with a wide variety of instruments and his song composition really shows his understanding and mastery of 
all the sounds that different instruments produce and how to utilize and and do them effectively. Like it, it's really hard to believe that, you know, one person does all the work that you hear in the song. Obviously he's hired an actual band to, to perform his songs. Uh, Most, mostly just... composed of it. You mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm mostly talking about the, uh, the composing of it. Yes, you're correct. But, and a lot of his songs really do fall in the rock genre. So I, I would say he's a more of a rock person. So if you're, if you're not really into rock, I don't know if there's a lot here for you, but if you like rock, I think this is a good place to start. I think personally his song monologue is just a really good showcase of his talent and like you hear a really good wide range of instruments in that song along with a really good composition and uh the thing i really really liked about monologue is you actually get to hear more of his vocal side in that song and he's packing some really solid vocals as well so i mean akiyama is a really well-rounded person that's capable of doing a lot by himself um all of you can check him out on his official YouTube page and his website and follow him on Twitter. But uh, I'm eager to hear what you guys thought of Helm. Luna, let's start with you. How did you enjoy Kiro uh, Akiyama? So I did go into it not knowing what to think because I seeing the album cover, I thought it was going to be super poppy. And I'm just like, I'm going to hate this. I'm going to hate this. I was pleasantly surprised about it just because it was more pop rock so it had a he had a good feel to it and I think his debut album was very solid for that I mean I I feel like him being composing all his own music is a big plus same with the songwriting as it does showcase in many of the songs and the first track on from Drop dropout Yasa Gure Kaido is a great way to start the album. It does give you a, way, a, a good idea on how his vocals sound and how to feel about this album and what it's going to be. I do think Monologue is one of his best tracks for sure. And also Yugure ni Utsushite. I thought it was great. And Anyone Nostalgia was fantastic as well. My only issue is eventually all his music does blend together so I, I would like to see him branch out a little bit more in the future and with his vocal style I think he could easily do that but as a first studio album a first debut album it was great and you can tell he's he's still not sure what he's gonna do yet he has this one distinct style but it would be neat to see him branch out yeah, I mean, I, I'll need to comment on this just a bit, Gray, when you're saying that he's a well-rounded artist. He, he's, uh, he's very interesting. He knows his, he knows what he has and how he thinks. He's a very musically trained, he's very musically gifted, I can, I can tell you that much. He can listen to a track and kind of compose off of that. So I can see the talent there, but kind of like what you were saying, Luna, It'll get really old really fast. Like, besides the the two tracks you kind of pointed out, everything kind of blended, in my personal opinion. There was stuff that kind of stood out, and that was... You got Cracker Shadow, which is really good. You got Monologue as well, which really, really showed up. Hello, My Shoes was pretty decent, but for me... Th- when you're listening to only from dropout and that is pretty much his his major foray of trying to introduce everyone to his work for me it's solid but it'll be a challenge to kind of go back to when we do our roundup if he doesn't have anything to kind of pop so to speak but that's just me personally I actually see that, you know, for the roundup, I can see because of how his music blends together after a while, it's unless he is a new single, new digital single or new single to make him differentiate from a lot of the other artists that are in that we've done for the roundup or, you know, the coming up roundup we're going to do. 
I can see him kind of just fading into that spotlight and being a little bit forgettable due to everything sounds the same. But he's you know, he's just starting out, so I'm curious to see where he'll go. But he does need something stand out from the rest of the tracks. Yeah, I mean, he's like Koda Yoshida, your last one, where he's great, but I think I need just one more album, if that, to kind of see where his footing is. Just, just one more. But that's also kind of what you need to do. I mean, I can't judge an artist on just one album alone. I need to kind of listen to maybe one more to kind of see. Because remember when we did AAA, it took me, it took us three albums to kind of know what their footing is. Yep. Yeah. No. No, I understand that criticism. Yeah, because and to be fair, for for from Dropout, his his album, you know that 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 has. A lot of songs that he released as singles in there so there's not i mean there's a couple of new songs and stuff like that but it's not loaded to the hilt with it so it, it is definitely you know there's a lot of unexplored potential that he he certainly has but i i do think he's got it and hopefully we'll see uh from dropout was released back in march so there's still a little time left at the end of the year although he hasn't made an announcement yet for anything any upcoming projects so he we i don't know if he'll have a new single by the time we get around to the roundup but maybe we'll see i know with this being his major debut he's definitely just getting started with his career so it'll be exciting to see even if it's not in time for the roundup it'll be exciting to see where his career goes from here yeah that's for darn sure and we'll just have to wait and see. Like I said, he he just, just he feels like Kodai Yoshida, in my opinion, where he knows where to start, but I kind of just need the, the growing pain, so to speak, to kind of come in and go. Yes, I, I completely agree with that. But I'm, uh, I'm very glad you brought him up, and he's definitely an artist to keep a lookout for, so thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you for your introduction to the lovely Kiro Akiyama. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm glad you guys somewhat enjoyed him. <laughs> so I, I yeah, because I was worried when I picked him, I wasn't certain how you guys would feel about him. So I'm glad for the most part you guys seem to like him, even if you just wanted to mix it up a bit, which is a fair criticism. I I will agree with. But yeah, with that, let's continue on to this week's Oricon here, and this week was very interesting, and I might add because. We had five new tracks. We so. did, and this was a very, not only an interesting re- week, it was a enjoyable week. Yes, yes, yes. So, I actually can't wait to hear what you guys thought about most of these tracks. But first off, let's go on to the first, I guess, kind of EP. I don't know what to say to this. It was like, it was like a super single. Like but... a maxi single? Yeah, it was like a maxi thing, I would say that much. But at number 10, it is Zero Universe by Yamamoto Sayaka, the lovely future here. And what did we think about this? I I had really good thoughts about it, but you guys go first. I greatly enjoyed it. I thought Yamamoto Sayaka showed off the skills that she has and deviated from some of her usual single styles that she has been doing which I liked and I think this is a great showcase of her vocal capabilities as well and composition wise too so extremely extremely enjoyable and I hope she does more stuff like this in the future and gives us some new something new to listen to like this I don't know I'm trying to think of how to describe it it's just, I loved all a lot of the other singles she's done, but for me, this was one of the ones that stood out the most so far. Yeah, uh, this is easily, I think, her best single since uh, Ichiri no Su. So, I, I really, really liked it. I, I felt like it. it's definitely, like, you really get to hear her vocal performance in this, and you know she's she's got that time from AKB she's really harnessed that the the strength of her vocals and you get to hear it in Zero Universe and it really just like like I don't want to steal your words Ken actually I'll, I'll wait and, and let you say that but uh she definitely killed it and she stuck in her lane 
and really played to what she she was able to build from her career. Stuck in her lane. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> for for me personally, she's the best vocalist in NMB. So I was very happy when she graduated and when she was doing her her stuff because when she was with NMB, um, Jungle Jungle Gym, I think was the first single that she solo single that she did when she was within nmb and that was really really good she is a very solid vocalist but the thing is when she got out of there instead of playing to her bass originally she done what she always thought everyone thought of her and that is the girl with the guitar image and granted she's great with it at a certain point but the thing is you can't just be known for that that's why other artists mixes it up that's why you get i'm yo i know i know she mixes it up every so often as well and she knows what her strengths are but the thing is the future was kind of getting into that book of yeah i'm just going to be the girl with the rock guitar and that's what i'm mostly going to do and it got to zero universe and she kind of flipped that where she knew that she has to change because otherwise her singles aren't going to sell and personally it's she did what she does best and that's rely on her vocal skills. And I've known this from her from her time at NMB. She's an amazing vocalist. An amazing vocalist. And Zero Universe kind of struck on that. And I, I Nante Iranai, the, the B-side single for that, was also as well. Against was, was alright, but the I Nante Iranai was really kind of close to Zero Universe as well, where they kind of relied on her vocal skills. And I can see why it was being used for most burgers now. So her vocals range can kind of do that. But regardless, Zero Universe was really good in my personal opinion. And it's probably one of her best releases since she got, since she went on her own. So, but with that, Zero Universe sold a lovely... 14,946 points. And going on up to number 9, it is Stand By Me, Stand By You by Hinai Dai. Now, this is very, very interesting. We haven't come across Hinai Dai yet. We have not, that I recall. That's from my rec- recognition. Yeah. I know who he is. I know who he is because I follow his work personally. Yeah, I don't. Think, I think this is the first one we've done. Yeah, I, I yes. don't think we've talked about him on the single side. I, I know he showed up on the album side a couple of times, but not to when we were talking about it. But how would you guys like your exposure to He Die Die? Because this is something very interesting that the artist has done as of late because his his claim to fame is the Japanese guy with the ukulele and really, really good vocals. But he kind of shifted that over time because he knew that he couldn't just rely on the ukulele. <laughs> so Stand By Stand by Me, Stand By You was a very interesting prospect. So what do you guys think of it before I kind of go into my thoughts? I loved it. This was one of my favorite songs of the week. It's actually tied with another one, but it hit me perfectly. His vocals, the composition, how simplistic it was. I freaking loved it. And I immediately went to Apple Music after I had the video on there and I hit the plus sign. I didn't even, I just could not wait. I was so excited and I had to listen to it again. And he is an artist now that is on my radar and I'm going to be going through all his music now. I'm very excited, but this was fantastic, like phenomenal. Just everything about it. I love. Yeah, this is a beautiful song. It's done really, really well. And his vocal performance in this is just outstanding. It really leaves an impact on you. And yeah, it's just like Luna said, like it's one of those songs where it's like after you hear it, you really want to hear it again because it really just leaves an impact on you. And I- I'm eager to he- hear more of his work. I think like this is great and fantastic. So I'm I'm glad he knocked it out of the park here because I- he's on my radar now. Yeah, no, personally, it is probably one of the best tracks of this week. And it was very interesting to kind of see how he took this 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 track and how the composition went because we were talking off air 
And you told me, Gray, that it sounded more like a country style of song, the the composition anyway. And I could kind of see that once you were talking to me about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, he kind of swings that way, so to speak. And, of course, obviously, the cowboy hat does not really help. <laughs> but, yeah, this week it sold a lovely 15,219 points. And going on up to number... Number eight, it is Salmon Shousetsu by the lovely King Nu here. And this was very interesting. This is their their first release since after ceremony. And they kind of cooked it, so to speak. What did we think about this track? I enjoyed it. I didn't like it as much as ceremony. But my only issue is it sounds very orchestrated once you get to the chorus. It's kind of becomes choiry gospely. However, I will say I I have not heard a man's voice go that high in a long time and he it, it, you really do hear his vocal range like holy cow, my mind was freaking blown. When I I heard that I'm like I had to do that second take in the video and I'm like what? Whoa. But it was a very interesting one, too. I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't my favorite. I, I don't know. I mean, I like this more than the last single that they put out, but I, I don't know. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of this song. It was okay. Like, he, you, you hear the upper registry of that dude's voice. Like, I thought for a while they had a guest vocalist on there because he, I thought... I mean, he just sounded like a woman for a huge chunk of the song. So, I mean, he kind of has that higher range vocals anyway. I mean, you yeah. can kind of hear that in Hakujitsu as well. But yeah. he kind of really put it all out in this one. Yeah, well, it also felt like he was really pushing his voice I mean, more. I mean, uh, the vocalist we're talking of is Daiki Sunuda, by the way. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Mr. Sunuda. But yes, I, I think you guys probably liked it a little bit more than me, but I don't think it's a bad song. And I think if you like King New, this is definitely something you would enjoy. Like, personally, it was all right for me. It Like like you were saying, Luna, it was kind of seeing gospel-y at near the chorus of the track. Every, everything else was, it was all right. I mean, it's a typical King New song, and he does put his vocal range, and it kind of, puts it on blast and it kind of makes sense because of the drama that it's a part of it's about a 30 year old 35 year old woman so it's it's kind of putting that point of view there too but i mean you're right and i remember you weren't having it last time gray you weren't really enjoying i think it was casa yeah i couldn't remember the name of the song but i I knew I didn't like it. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't me. It wasn't for me. If that, I guess it's like the best way to put it. Like th oh, this is not a song. You I didn't like Doron mostly because of just how all over the place is. I remembered. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That that sounds about right. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's it was all right. I'm not gonna fault it. It wasn't my best song. It wasn't their worst song. Te technically, Hatsu. Hakujitsu is always going to be one of my favorites by King New, and Samon Shosetsu isn't going to really do any favors. It was a solid song. If I had to give it a number, it's it's a two. It's a solid two. Samon Shosetsu sold a lovely 16,182 points, and going on up to number seven, it is Party Starters by Arashi. Oh boy. So, Gray, why don't you go first? Because I knew you really liked this song compared to well, me. Well, <laughs> com compared to you two, I did really like it. But it's one of, my, of, like, when we've started covering them, I think this is actually one of my least favorites, too. I really, really didn't like it the first time I heard it. But when I was re-listening to it today to prep for the show, I, I was enjoying it a bit more. So, it's... Um, I don't even know if there's really a whole lot to say about it. I mean, you'll probably have a ton to say about it, but for me, I don't know if there's really a whole lot to say. It, it's, it's a, it's trying to be a fun song. I don't know if it succeeds in that per se. You know, it's pretty upbeat. The guys are, 
seem to be enjoying themselves. And I think it's trying to appeal to a more Western audience. It was filmed in LA, so if, for the music video. So I, I think this one's done with a slight more Western appeal to it. I don't think it has a well, Western sound per se. I think it was filmed around the time that they were doing the. the Whatever you call. Yeah, no, and not turning not, up. Just turning, turning up. up. I'm pretty sure it's all the behind the scenes footage from there because. Oh, okay. They couldn't have come here. <laughs> oh, that's fair. But I, I mean, I, I liked it. I, I would, I would put it as a like. Uh, I don't love it. I, I don't even think I've downloaded it to my phone. So, it, it's, it's okay. I don't. Out of three, what would you give it? I'd give it a two, kind of in the middle. I'd give it a one. Oh, I give it a zero. If I... <laughs> a point five. Well, zero I was wasn't say on your grading scale. Do... I mean, I'd still do it too, but zero was not on if... your grading scale. No, no if point scales, points... Luna. Just straight whole numbers. Well, well, say say what you need to say about it first. So, you can tell this definitely was like you said. Filmed the video was filmed around the same time as turning up. And I think this song was meant to go for a more Western audience due to the fact that the Olympics were supposed to happen this year. So being honest, I think that was the goal to do a song like this and they could utilize this in Olympics, which I mean, yes, it would have worked. I still wouldn't have cared for this one. I just felt it wasn't that catchy. It didn't showcase their vocals and it didn't fully feel like Arashi to me. It just felt very forced. That was my other issue with it. The whole song feels very forced. With whatever you call, you could hear their vocals on point. You could hear all that. Turning Up was just a fun song. It was them being them. But this one, there's just something about it that just isn't quite them. I mean, you got their happy, you know, funness they're having. However, the song feels forced. And it, even if, even though it's it's trying to appeal to Western audience, that's not something a Western audience today would really like go for. Maybe the little kids would, but not like teenagers or like young adults or even adults my age. So like for me, this is my problem with Odyssey. To be perfectly honest, when they try to like kind of do a little something that isn't Johnny's, it's really hit or miss for me. And it's exactly like how you said, Luna. It feels forced. And it, this was probably supposed to be an actual release release around the time, time around the time that Turning Up was probably coming out. It, it probably wouldn't have been a digital. It probably would have been a physical an, or a proper release for this song anyway. But for, for me, it, it's a one. And I really hate that I have to give an honesty song this because I, they're my boys. I really love them. They're my boys. But it's hard. It's really hard for when they do songs like this. And we'll get on this eventually. And it's really difficult when you have a song like Whenever You Call that just knocks it out of the park. And you have a guest composer and writer that's that's also another thing too this is done by a western art or a western composer i think his name is sam hollander yeah and and he he does this style of music and it's personally not for me and it's kind of just going fairly interesting on the opposite side from whenever you call and i know that isn't a very fair comparison but that shows you how really good Bruno Mars kind of hit it out of the park with it, right? Oh, yes, he did. I mean, regardless, it's decent, but it's not for me. And when you get to a lot of later Arashi songs, that's always how I really feel. It's it's all right, and it's good. It's them, but it's not for me. And well, we can talk more about this later, later on. But regardless, party starters, solid day, lovely. 18,540 points and going on up to number six it is make you happy by Niju. not much we can say there i mean it's Niju. and this week it sold that lovely 19,825 points and going on up to number five it is yoru ni kakeru by yao sobi 
keeping it at number five. They were at number four, but now they're holding on number five spots now. But this week I sold the lovely 24,371 points. And continuing on up to number four, it is I Can't Stop Me by the lovely girl group twice. Now this is very interesting. So they've been kind of, this is, have been sleeping over the last couple months now, but this song is also a Korean release song. And personally, I, I don't listen to Korean, but how did you guys like this? I'm going to say this is my tie for the week. I loved it. And most of you probably already figured out I do listen to K-pop. I don't listen to it as often as I used to. And I'm... I like Twice. I've liked some of their past songs. However, I'm not like a super huge, huge like mega fan or really follow them too much. However, I Can't Stop Me was amazing. I heard it once. I listened to it again and again. I hit the plus sign on Apple Music and not to mention I would consider buying this album for this song. And I... I don't do that often unless I really want a K-pop CD. Then I'll, if there's a couple songs I want, I will buy it. This song was this good that I, I'm going to check out their second album and I might end up buying it. I loved it. I mean, it's catchy. All their vocals are in sync perfectly. It just, there's something about it that is perfect. And out of all the Twice songs I've heard, and I loved Breakthrough. I thought Breakthrough was great when it came out. And I like TT. But this is probably tops it for my favorite songs, and I, I'm i just amazed, and I wish if K-pop was more like this song, because I'd come back to it. I gravitate more toward this style, and it also reminded me a little bit of Girls' Generation and why I loved them, and Sistar, and 4 Minute, you know, like, all those, but, like, it, just something about it, their chemistry, their vocals, the composition, it just melted perfectly, I just cannot recommend this enough. Yeah, this this is a really, really good single. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I Can't Stop Me. It, Luna pretty much hit all the highlights. Uh, so forgive me if I'm repeating her a bit, but man, this song is catchy. It, it is really, really catchy. It's got a good hook to it and a good energy about it. It just makes you want to listen to it and... Uh, the girls just really knock it out of the park, and it, it all comes together really well. I, I think this is one of their best songs that they've released in a while. I, I know Twice can be hit and miss with me, and I really, really like this. I think this is one of their, like I said, one of their best songs in a while. This is really, really freaking good. And I think if if you're not into K-pop, I don't know if there's something here for you, but... If you kind of like K-pop, or if you like Twice sometimes, definitely give this one a listen to. This is a really, really freaking good song, and definitely one of the highlights of the week for me. Yeah, like for me, so I, I don't listen to K-pop anymore, so I mean, this is this is always very interesting to kind of hear from my point of view here, but it, it's, it was really decent. I I, I thought it was all right. My, my friend who really likes Twice had been loving it and mostly the, the the dance moves for the music video he was he was doing it and i was like very first off fairly impressed because he's a 200 pound man doing all these dance moves so <laughs> but the, the the next part is the i mean the composition it does very well for these girls and they know what works for them and this was a very solid song overall and the chorus is catchy as hell, and that's what's what you need pretty much at this point. But yeah, I can't stop me. So they're lovely twenty five thousand two hundred and eighty points here, and going on up to number three, it is Dynamite by BTS. Speaking of another K pop sensation, so this was very interesting on my point of view. I don't know if you guys listen to like pop radio or anything like that, but for me, Dynamite started showing up. Like on the regular radio waves, on, on regular like pop radio here, and I thought it was fairly interesting that th- this particular song, none of their other K-pop songs, and probably only Gundam style, probably only made it over, but 
all the other K-pop songs haven't really reached that mainstream peak like Dynamite did. So it's it's very interesting to kind of see it that way. Well, Dynamite's still really catchy, and I think a big part of that is it being international. And correct me if I'm wrong, they are currently using I Dynamite for a commercial in the U.S. as well. Yeah, it's for the Samsung S20. For the, yeah, so, I was going to say, I think it's for the Samsung. Yeah, yeah I've, so... I've, 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 like numbingly had to watch it how many times because they show it all the time during NFL. So, and I have a feeling it has a big effect in Japan too because I'm sure this song is being played on repeat. And with BTS being as big as they are right now and have pretty much become a world phenomena, and all eyes have really been on them. If you go on Twitter and you go to trending, it almost every day BTS is on there for something. So seeing Dynamite hang on this long not surprising me at all but they've really become like a huge k-pop phenomenon and have put k-pop in the spotlight you know for better for worse either way you know you either you love them or you don't and i mean i'm glad to see them getting some recognition for in the asian music world because i feel like a lot of people ignored that for years and i mean you had a lot of artists come over and try to break out of here over here, you know, both K-pop, J-pop, C-pop, and no one ever s- really stuck. And I feel like BTS is the one that en- BTS and Blackpink are the two that ended up really sticking. But in general, I think something about BTS just really resonated with countries all over the world. So I I have a feeling we'll be seeing it on here sooner, to, you know, for a while to come. Yeah, I don't think uh, Dynamite's going anywhere anytime soon. Also, I, I'm not on TikTok. Don't hold me to it. I would be stupefied if the song wasn't popular on TikTok. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, it, it is. is but <laughs> like, it is. Even if I'm not on, none of us are on TikTok, but I've, I've seen it fairly popularized yeah. because of it. I am not on TikTok, but I have friends who are obsessed with it. So they like to send me TikTok videos and... I've seen some of the BTS ones and girls dancing to it. So, yes, it's that's one of the other reasons it's really big, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I don't think this is going anywhere anytime soon. And like Luna said, BTS, they're, they're international. Like they're they're in America. They're in Japan. They're probably in China and Europe, Europe. They're yeah, everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. literally worldwide. I mean, yeah. I can go to a local media store and buy their CDs. Yeah. They have their latest Japanese album at one of the stores close to me. Um, oh. They have all their Korean albums. You can also buy their albums at Target. You, you can, I was going to say, you can go down to Walmart. Like, I live out in the middle of nowhere. You can go to the Walmart and find BTS paraphernalia, their albums, like everything. Coloring books. Yeah. And Barnes & Noble, like all the big stores have it. So I'm not surprised. I'm sure Japan's the same way. And I'm sure they have more fan goods. So I, I think, and this song's going to be on there for a while. And it is very catchy. And it's actually a really good song by them. I yeah, like it, so. it, it. Like for me, I've always liked it when they did like vocal heavy songs. This is their first kind of upbeat song that they've done that I really, really enjoyed. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not opposed to seeing it here. Regardless, this week it's at the lovely 34,657 points. And continuing on up to number two, speaking of probably what's going to be another international thing, it is Gringue by Lisa. Good to see it on here. Very interesting that it reached number two, but I think Leo 9 has something to do with that. But regardless, this week it sold a lovely 34,695 points. And going on up to number one, it is Homura. Once again by Lisa. Sticking on there. I mean, as long as Yaiba is going to be in the theaters and taking number one, I can see this song personally being staying up there. But it is what it is. And it's very interesting if you look on Japanese Twitter, they have the times for Yaiba, and it's one showing every hour from opening to closing. At least 
one showing every hour. Yeah, and I mean, I see it's like it's still being talked about a lot in America too. Like I see a lot of people talking about it on Twitter, Facebook, like Yaiba is huge. Like I didn't realize like how big Yaiba was until that movie hit, but I mean, I knew it was big. I didn't know it was that big, you know. So, um I didn't know how big My Hero Academia was either until someone quoted a stat to me that my Hero Academia is the number two cartoon in America behind Spongebob. So, fun facts. Yeah. But regardless, this week it sold a lovely 130,447 points. And while we're here, let's go on to the albums real fast. And nothing really out of the woods here you got you got zorn with their new album wands burn the secret stray sheep is still on there so kenshi is literally gonna win album of the year regardless of sales wise because it's been on here almost every week you got oh they know request again by juju leo nine stuck that number five you got why eyes wide open twice volume two so this is where originally I can't stop me is from so yeah, this it was the lead track. He got semicolon the special rap version from seventeen, and mini sewed blue hour from Tamar X together TXT at number one. It's really sad that I know most of these Korean groups now, but hey, hey it is what it is. Regardless, I want to say thank you for joining us on this episode of Ungun Kadi. You can check us out on all the social media platforms on Twitter and Instagram at Ongakudu. You can check out the website at ongakudu.com. You can also check out our YouTube channel where we have a, our most of our episodes on there. So if you guys don't want to listen to it through all podcast media services, you can check it up on YouTube instead. You can also check out our affiliates, Koryu Hunter. He is a horror and retro streamer who was actually going through rule of roses the earlier today he was kind of getting pissed off at that actually it was really funny but you can check him out at twitch.tv slash cody hunter k-y-o-r-y-u-h-u-n-t-e-r you can also check out our affiliate timber Taff, who is going through all the lovely stuff he went through haunting ground and is going through majora's mask yeah, I don't, I don't know. I never played Majora, so it was very interesting looking at that. So you can check them out at twitch.tv slash TimberTaft, T-I-M-B-R-T-A-F-T. You can also check out your sister, Luna Rose, who just made affiliate, so congratulations to her. She was streaming Dark Souls, and I think it literally just killed her because I haven't seen her since. But you can check her out at twitch.tv slash rainstarkitty, R-A-I-N-S-T-A-R-K-I-T-T-Y. You can also check out our affiliate, Fangirl Has No Name. She is a variety streamer who is very into the Zelda community. You can check out her on twitch.tv slash fangirlhasnoname, F-A-N-G-I-R-L. H-A-S-N-O-N-A-M-E. You can also check out the podcast that me, Lou, Timber, and Fangirl are on, and it's called Potosaurus. This week's episode, we talked about we talked about Cyberpunk 20, or 2177 getting delayed. We also talked about the Twitch DMCAs that have been happening, and that's been affecting my channel as well, because all my AKB stuff is gone. <laughs> Thank you, Twitch. Thank you ever so much. But you can check out that by looking up Corey Hunter on all podcast media services, just same as the Switch handle. You can also check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ongakuryu, same as the podcast where I am streaming, I don't know what I've been streaming, Detroit Become Human. I've been doing the robot game, so that's fun. And eventually I will do Speederman because I will be getting my PS5, so look out for that but yeah you can find me on twitter at otyken1 where i'm talking about bang dream aina aiba bang dream i i don't know I, i'm not really into nfl as of late because i've been going crazy but more bang dream where can we find you gray you can find me on twitter on gaku gray where i tweet about what i'm watching what i'm listening to i've mostly just turned it into a common writer Feed. So if you want to know my thoughts and opinions on Common Rider, that's the place to go. And you, Luna? 
You can find me on several outlets. I am Luna Maria 87 on Twitter, my anime list, Anime Planet, and Letterboxd. That there you can see what I'm watching, what I'm listening to. I've been tweeting a little bit more lately, mainly doing retweets. And on Instagram, I am Nerdy Collector Luna, where you can see what I am currently watching or listening to movie wise. I post pics of my collection and my cat. But yeah, once again, I want to say thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Ungakadiu. I'm your host, Ken, saying thank you very much and have a great day. Aloha. This is Luna. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We hope you greatly enjoyed it. We will see you next time. Ja matane. This is Gray. We have a lot of really cool upcoming projects to be on the lookout for, and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.